or how many of us have ever joked, if I could fill my tyres with helium, my bike would be lighter and I'd be able to go faster. <laughs> well, one way to find out if that's true or not is to actually try it out. So, I went down to my bottled gas supplier with my old gas bottle, emptied it and got it filled up with helium. Right, so first we'll find out if this really is helium. I'm sure it is. Got to be careful here. That should be right. That's helium. That's helium, all right. It's cold. Hopefully this wears off too. Right, all jokes aside, we've got a special connection here which goes on to the French valve on the wheels. So what we're going to do first is pump these wheels up with 90 pounds per square inch with ordinary air and weigh them. And then we're going to deflate all the air out and reinflate with the helium and weigh them again and see if there's a weight difference. Getting an accurate measurement to one gram isn't actually easy because you just have to breathe on the wheel and it takes it up or down a gram. So finally balancing it, I did it 10 times for each wheel and took the average for each wheel. And we'll now measure these wheels with air. Okay, so first the rear one. The average weight of all 10 measurements 1,518 grams. And now the front wheel. The average weight was 1,170 grams. Let's try and get as much air out as we can. So let's start with the front one. It's going to be cold. And I'll put some gloves on because whenever you're dealing with compressed air, even with your cylinders that you take with you when you go for your ride, your VO2, VO2, CO2 cartridges, it can get cold. So we'll use these gloves. Right. So we'll put that on there. tire up to 90 pounds per square inch with helium and then to finally balance the front wheel on the scales. So here we go, helium in the front wheel, 90 pounds per square inch comes to an average weight of 1166 grams. So that's an average of 4 grams lighter than with air. Rear wheel now, pump up 90 pounds per square inch with helium. So our rear wheel with helium weighed in at 1,512 grams. That's six grams lighter than with air. Actually, the average was about five and a half grams difference but I called it six. So what weighs four grams? How about one cycling sock? No? 19 grams. How about a pair of Oakley Sunnies? Definitely no, 27 grams. <laughs> now this water bottle, when it was dry, was 56 grams. I put water in it and tipped all the water out. There's one more drop left in there. It's only water clinging to the inside of the bottle, bottle there. 57, 58, 58. There you go. There's two grams. Somehow there's two grams of water in there. <laughs> that gives you an idea how much four grams is going to be. It's almost insignificant. So here's our wheel and it's four grams lighter. Trouble is, Weight saved at the rim is twice as effective as weight saved on your bike. 
that's good. That means when I'm going fast, rotating mass, which is more, less mass on the outside is going to be lighter. But when do you go fast? When you're descending. When is weight important? When you're ascending. <laughs> so if you're going up a hill, how fast is your wheel going around? Or oh, you might be doing 5, 10, maybe you're really fit and you're doing 15 or 20 k's up the hill. But when are you doing 80 k's an hour when that mass makes a difference? When you're going downhill. And most cyclists will tell you when you're going downhill, mass makes you go faster and makes you more stable. So, there's a conundrum. Now I know what you're thinking. Even going uphill if you're going slow, the wheels are still 4 grams each lighter. That's 8 grams. So I'm going uphill and I'm 8 grams lighter. Why not fill up the frame with helium? Why not fill up the forks with helium? What about your holotech cranks? Fill them up too. Oh, I could save heaps. <laughs> okay, what about nitrogen? Sure, you could put nitrogen in your tyres. Cars do that. Racing cars do that. Here's your pump. So you're pumping away. What are you putting in? Air. Normal, regular air. And what's air made of? 78% nitrogen anyhow. <laughs> Okay, so you're pumping away, you've got 78% nitrogen in your tyres. The thing is, oxygen actually leaks faster than nitrogen through butyl. So if you're using regular butyl tubes, you're getting less and less oxygen the more refills you do on your tyres. If you're using, using the same air and you're just refilling all the time, when it goes down a little bit, you pump more in, you're getting more and more nitrogen content in your tyres. So you end up with mostly nitrogen in your tyres anyhow. So there's a thought. <laughs> and here's another one. CO2 cartridges. Really handy. In an emergency, when you get a puncture, put your new tube in and off you go again. Now you've got mostly carbon dioxide in that new tube and guess what? CO2 leaks through butyl a lot faster than air. Don't believe me? Look that up too. So when you get home later on in the very nearest foreseeable future, your tyre's going down. You're going to have to pump it up with regular air anyhow. And here's another fact about helium. It's less compressible than regular air. That means when you do pump your tyre up to 90 to 110 pounds per square inch, it's going to give you a harder ride. Right, one of the things I noticed, I'll just put the wheels up here, is the rear wheel and then the front wheel it's actually going down. It took me between uh, doing that wheel and this wheel about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, and this is actually going down now. I feel like that one's going down too. So we're going to leave this for another hour or two and I'll get back to you. Right, so about two and a half hours have passed now. Um, we'll have a look at the front one first, and yep, yeah, I can feel it now. Yeah. It's definitely gone down, compress it with my thumb. I couldn't do that before at 90 pounds per square inch, or even probably 60. <laughs> so that's probably about 30 now. Yeah, the rear one's a little bit more, but not much more to catching up. I can compress that too, not quite as much. So there you go. Even though helium's what, 724% lighter than air, because it's lighter, it seems to seep through the walls of your tube and your tire, well, your tube. So it leaks, it leaks, air stays in a lot longer, whereas helium, being a lighter gas, well, it's escaping from the tube. Don't ask me to explain that molecularly, but it does. So, for instance, if you're going to ride your bike, fill your tyres up with helium, if you really must, you better ride it pretty quickly. <laughs> well, there's some interesting facts about helium. Would you put helium in your tyres? I wouldn't put helium in my tyres, even though I did then. Certainly not going to ride with it. And now I've got a leftover a big canister of helium. You'd have a party. Right, all jokes aside. Right, all jokes aside. <laughs>